Hi folks, so this is just a short recording to explain how we use JIRA in the Mautic community to manage and credit contributions. It's something that's been requested by people in the community, so hopefully this will help explain both how to create the things in JIRA, but also how to find things to work on. So to start off with, to get access to JIRA, you can go to mautic.atlassian.net. So that's our hosted version of JIRA, which we are given by Atlassian for free. And when you log in, if you need an account, anyone can invite you, but when you can log in, you'll see various screens. This is what I see when I first log in, the last things that I've been accessing and what have you. And in terms of why we use Jira, we encourage people to always work in the public domain. All our projects and all of our issues should be accessible publicly unless there's a reason not to. So for example, our legal and finance team, the project is available publicly, but our issues will often be marked as only available to the team unless there's a good reason for them to be public because they're usually sensitive topics we're working on. Anyone in the community who's already on JIRA is actually able to invite new people. Under the team menu, you can invite someone to join JIRA or you can request access and we can add you to the instance. Every team, every working group, every project can have a JIRA project. Basically, any organized group of people in the community who want a way to track what they're working on and have that accredited to people as as contribution credits because it's something that isn't easy to contribute automatically through other channels we can set up a JIRA project for. The other thing to mention is that we do use labels really extensively to enable people to find things across lots of different teams and projects and what have you quickly. So always use the relevant labels if you're creating issues, if you're creating resources in JIRA, because it just helps people to find those things much more quickly. And also to mention is that we have JIRA automatically linked to GitHub. So if you reference a JIRA issue in one of the MORTIC repositories, with the issue number in the title exactly as it comes up as the issue key in JIRA, then that will automatically link that pull request to the JIRA issue. So we do have a structure in JIRA that you might not be familiar with. So you can see it here. We've got initiatives, which are high level used on the roadmap project. So these think of these as like top level organizational projects. And within an initiative, we have projects. So these are like the major buckets, the major things that we're working on within those initiatives. And usually a project will have sub projects and tasks within them. And Epic is a group of things that you're working on, a specific documented set of tasks that relate to a project or a sub project. Tasks are the single stuff you have to actually do. And within that, you can sometimes break out a task into smaller tasks so that either you can make sure that you're clear on what needs to be done, or you might have different people working on different parts of that task. So you can make sure that people are credited correctly. So this is an example of how this enables cross team collaboration. So at the top level, we've got the Mautic 5 initiative which you can see is TPROD, which means product team issue. Within that, we've got a project. There's several projects, but a couple of them are the Symphony 5 code updates. So the code updates that are required to uh, go from Symphony 4 to Symphony 5, which is a product team project. But we've also got there a marketing team project, which is release marketing. So that's making sure that we communicate the release effectively out to the community. There's also one in that initiative for documentation, making sure that the developer docs and the end user docs are up to date and any knowledge base articles are written. So there's multiple projects across multiple teams under the same initiative. And then we've got the Epic. So this is the actual like collection of stuff that has to get done in order for that project to be completed. So for the Symphony 5 code updates, the things we need to do to support Symphony 5, one of the epics is the deprecations that have been removed from Symphony 4. And there's lots of other epics that are included in that project. And then another epic in the release marketing one is, for example, we've made some changes to how transactional emails are dealt with in Mautic. So we've got a whole bunch of content we want to write to educate the community about the importance of transactional emails, about why you would send transactional versus marketing, what the difference is, why you shouldn't do one when you mean the other and so forth. So you can see that's actually under MTech. The key is MTech 30. That's the marketing team's editorial calendar. So that's an epic which is on the editorial calendar to write some content about 
transactional emails. Then the next level down, we've got the actual tasks, like the specific things that people have to work on within the epics. So from the Symphony 4 deprecations, the task underneath that, which is in the product team, is addressing controller DI deprecations. So that is something that someone will physically pick up and say, I will do that job. And then they'll post a pull request that fixes that issue. In the transactional emails side of things, we've got a subtask of writing about best practices for transactional emails so that we've got a bit more of a body of knowledge to support people. And that's in the MTech one, which is the editorial calendar. And then finally, as I mentioned, you might sometimes have subtasks, not all the time. So the addressing controller deprecations didn't actually have any subtasks, but the best practice for transactional emails has subtasks of write the articles, proofread the article. There might be some for design the visual, the image to go with it and so forth. So you can see that it allows us to roll everything up into one thing that we're all moving towards whilst ensuring that we can have an oversight of all the different teams who are involved in delivering that. And by breaking things down into tasks and subtasks, it means that we can make sure that we can be very granular in how people are getting contributed. So an article might take 20 hours worth of work. You might have to research it for two hours. You might have to then pull together your ideas and brainstorm with someone else and get a sense of what the sections in that article might be. Then you need to write it. Then you might need someone else to proofread it. So using the subtasks means that you can actually break things down into individual contribution credits, either for something you're working on or for something someone else is working on, so that the tasks and the time that's spent is actually represented effectively. So how do we create and assign issues in JIRA? So anyone who has an account can create issues in pretty much every project. So creating initiative, generally speaking, this would be done by the leadership team of the project, but it might be that you need to create an initiative for a community initiative you're working on or something that you're working on as a company that is going to be included in the roadmap and we need to therefore create the issue and the projects and everything. So to do that, you click create issue you choose the project that it should be in. A lot of the initiatives are in the roadmap project, which has got the key of ROAD, so road, but they can be in a team's project. So the Mautic 5 one is in a product team. So just choose the most appropriate project for that to be in. And then in the issue type, you choose initiative. That's all you need to do really. And then you can, in the summary, that's like the title, and then you can put a description which explains in a lot more detail what this initiative is. And usually for initiative, it's helpful to have more detail in the description because that's like the top level item people are going to be looking at. When you create a project, so projects, as we remember, come underneath an initiative, we do exactly the same. So in this case, I'm creating a project in the Morticon Working Group, MCON and you choose the project type, the issue type of project, but then we want to make sure we roll it up into an initiative, ideally. And to do that, you use the field called parent link. So you can see here that I've started typing Mortic Con, and it's then filtering out the initiatives that I could link my project up into. So I would then choose the first one, Mortic Conference Global 2023, and then that's linked up to the initiative. And again, I would type a summary for the name of this project and then more detail in the description just explaining to people what this is. So the same kind of principle is true for an epic. So if you create an epic which is within a project, you type the epic name which is slightly different because we have an epic name and then a summary. We choose the parent link again the same way as we just did. Choose the project that you just created, so marketing, uh, or whatever, whichever one's the most appropriate one for your issue, and then you fill in the rest of the issue. So it's that parent link that you have to look for, for the project and for the epics. When you've created an epic, so here you can see we've created an epic for a sponsor of Morticon, we can then create child issues, so tasks within this epic. So you can see those child issues here. You can either use the button where it says add child issue or you can click the plus icon just above the other child issues and it will let you type in the bottom underneath a child issue. So those will automatically be linked to the epic so you haven't got to worry about selecting the epic link and stuff like that. And when you go into an epic you'll see all of the related issues there. 
Also useful to mention that you can link tasks in multiple teams to an epic in another team. It doesn't have to just be within that project. So you can have an epic that's got tasks from marketing, product, education and so forth. So once you've created an a uh, task, it might be that you need to add subtasks. Like when we talked about writing the content, you might need to actually create some tasks underneath it for proofreading or editing and stuff like that. So to do that, you use create a subtask and then the subtasks show within that task. So you can see at the top in the breadcrumb, we're within the task and we've got the create subtask button there. Subtasks are all listed within the task and you can, as I mentioned, press the plus button on the right hand side above the subtasks and you can actually write in the line underneath which will add subtasks for you. Sometimes that's quicker if you've got to put in several. You just type, hit enter, type, hit enter and it creates those subtasks very quickly for you. So it allows you to move faster basically. And then basically where you see the icon for um, an avatar, you can quick click on that and that allows you to assign that task to an individual who's on Jira. And so as soon as that is assigned to a person, they can start working on it. And then when they mark it as done, that's the point where the contribution credit is awarded to that person when they mark that task as done. If you've created a task, like I've created create sponsor announcement images for Omnivary and I've forgotten to assign the Epic link, no problem. There is an Epic link field, which you can see here. So if you've created a task and you forgot to assign it to the Epic, you just edit the Epic link and search and you'll find the right Epic. If you create a Epic and you forgot to assign it to the project, you just use the parent link field and that will let you roll it up. And likewise, if you created a project, it will let you roll it up into an initiative by using that field. So don't stress too much if you've forgotten to add those parent links, you can add them later if necessary. It's just easier to add them when you start. So that's how to create issues, but how do you find your way around Jira once you've started and you're using Jira and you want to find tasks that you can work on or what's happening in a team, for example. So when you log into Jira, I see a lot here because I've got lots that are already starred, but when you're in a project or a board, there's a little star icon, which I've squared here over on the right hand side, which you can click on and that then allows you to favorite that board or that project, which makes it much faster to access because it comes up first in your drop downs. So here you can see my projects. I've got all the starred ones at the top and then at the bottom, there's a link that says view all projects. So that's how you can view all the projects that you have access to on the Mortic Jira instance. But I do recommend using the stars for the teams or the projects that you find yourself coming back to time and again, because it just makes it much quicker browsing round. If you like boards, I prefer boards because I find it easier to work with. When you go under the your work menu item at the top here, and then you click on boards, you'll see all of the starred boards that you've saved that you want to access quickly. And then at the bottom, you'll see view all boards. So this is all the boards that you have access to view within the project. And generally speaking, when you go into a project on Jira, the first thing you'll see is a board. If there is a board assigned to that project, you'll see the board to start with. So that's a very quick way for you to find stuff that you, that you wanna work on because boards for me are very intuitive and easy to use. So we'll start out with one board, which is called the Good First Issues board. So this is using a label, which is Good First Issue. So it's suggesting that this issue is well documented. It's got a lot of information about exactly what needs to be done to complete this task. And it's something for someone who's a relative newcomer to the team. So you don't need to have really in-depth knowledge to be able to work on this. It's something that you should be able to jump in and work on quite quickly. When you go to this board, so if we had clicked on here, you can see good first tasks, the second one in my list. So if I clicked on good first tasks or went to view all boards and clicked on good first tasks, then I would see this layout. So there's an option here for quick filters, which I've pressed and it shows you here that you can quickly show issues from the various teams because they're often what people are like, oh, I do stuff in the marketing team. Let's just see things that are in the marketing team. At the moment, by default, it is showing you any tasks that are a good first issue that are not completed. So these are things that, that are either in progress or that need working on. 
and you'll see we've got horizontal rows. We've got MCON, which is the Mortic Conference Global Working Group. We've got TCOM, which is the community team, TEDU, which is education, and TMAR, which is marketing. And they have got all of these issues which are marked as good first issues. So good for a newbie to work on. So you can expand and contract these using the arrows next to them. Or under the three dot menu here, there's also an option which you can click on, which allows you to expand all or collapse all, which if it's been expanded, it's easier to do it that way. You can search the backlog if there's something particular that you want to find in the tasks, like there's a particular thing you want to do, like content or design or something. And you can also click on only my issues. So this is just find issues that are assigned to you already so that you can work on them and things that have been recently updated. So it's a pretty useful board to find if you are new and you're looking for something to work on. So I recommend having a look around these. And then if you want to work on something, you can just assign it to you, work on it and do everything through the issue. But what I'd suggest is that you look at the team that it's in. So this is Morticon, this is community education, marketing, whatever. Copy the link to the issue and just post in that Slack channel. I want to work on this issue. I've assigned it to myself. And then if anyone needs to provide you with support or resources or anything like that, they'll be able to see that. So just let people know that you're planning to work on something if you use this board. So yeah, and then we've got three columns, to do, in progress and done. So they're very broad categories, but generally speaking, anything in to do either hasn't been started yet and isn't assigned or has been assigned to someone and they haven't started work on it yet. So if it's already assigned to someone, you can always message them and just say, are you working on this? Can I help you? Because sometimes people assign themselves tasks and then they drop off and don't actually complete it. So never assume that just because it's assigned to someone, you can't work on that or help the person on that issue. So that's boards and how boards work. And you can then drag tasks to in progress when you start working on them and done when you're finished. You can also search the whole of Jira without being constrained by a board using the search feature at the top of the Jira instance and just free text searching. So just type whatever you want and that will search the whole issue for that issue, for that string. But you can also use JQL, so I think it's Jira query language for any issues, like in this example, any issues that have the label of design and they are still in the to-do category, so they haven't actually been marked as in progress yet. So JQL is fairly easy to pick up. You can start typing like labels equals, and then it will give you some options to choose from. So it's quite intuitive because it steers you towards writing the right queries and you can save those queries. So if there's something that you're constantly finding or searching for, you can see next to search, it says save as, then it will ask you for a name to save this filter and it's saved to your Jira account. So you'll be able to find it under the menu item of filters. So this is a really helpful tool for finding things to work on if you specifically know that there are issues that you're looking for in a particular area of Mortic. Okay, I think that's it actually. I think I've got to the end of my presentation. That's gone through why we use the hierarchical structure to roll everything up, to enable cross-team collaboration, to make it clear what tasks are available to be worked on and to know where we're at with projects. And hopefully it gives you a bit of an insight in how to get started with this and the kind of things that you can do to find tasks to work on. If you get stuck with anything, if you need an invitation to Jira, or if there's anything that you find is a bit confusing or needs a bit more clarity, please do let us know because we're more than happy to improve our documentation and also to make things easier for people. So yeah, hopefully that's good and you'll be able to get started contributing to Morse. Give me a shout if you've got any thoughts and leave some messages in the comment and I'll see you in the community. Thank you. Bye.